Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, uh, the voice of hardcore boxing. I'm going to have a guest on here in a minute, The Stig, aka Philip Sims, the taxi driver from London. Uh, we're going to have him on, he's obviously going to get his mo he's going to have his moment in here regarding Tyson Fury. Here he is, the Stig. Hello. Is that Mr. Uh... Very hot. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Mr. Very hot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, no, it's good, Russ. I'm just, I'm just a bit upset about the quality of my voice that's coming across your system in your office. I mean, I've got a lovely voice. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I put it onto Dale's phone, didn't I? I should have left it on mine, shouldn't I? I, di I didn't have time. What it is, you see, right? I didn't have time to set the Bluetooth up and everything up, but I've set it all up now, so you, you, you know, you, you'll sound clear today, Stig. But I could, hear, I could hear you, mate. But you get a few gimps that complain and say that they couldn't hear you. Obviously, they need to clean their ear holes, don't they? Well, I, I, I must be a gimp because I struggle to listen to myself. Well, clean your fucking ears, then, mate, because I can hear it. I've just watched it back now, right, to check inserts, and I can hear it clearly. So. People need to go to doctors and have their ears flushed out, don't they? <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not criticising you, mate. I mean, it's just... Um, well, it's down to me, isn't it? So if people are complaining, well, fair enough. I'll have a look at it, but that, that uh, Bertone Bluetooth I bought is brilliant, but I didn't even set it up because I thought that my phone would be clear enough and then we put it onto uh, Dale's phone as well. But anyway, it's done now. There's nothing I can do about it. That's, that's past, isn't it? Moving on, right. Did you watch the boxing last night? I watched uh, Tyson's fight because a very good friend of mine, aka Porky the Pig, yeah. sent, me, sent me a copy of it this morning, so I watched it when I woke up. Ah, oh, right, what did you think? I didn't, I didn't oh, I thought it was amazing, mate. I mean, he did a. I actually had broken down. So I didn't even listen to the fight. I broke down at Cobham Services on the uh, M25. Why? What's the matter with your cab? No, I got low on fuel, mate, and. Uh, Went and filled up, or we'll put some more in, I didn't fill up, the, the common services are too expensive. And um, air got into my air filter, so I couldn't start it. But then uh, eventually Chris and I had a chat in our in a DM group and uh, he sorted me out, so I got it started. And off I went, I got home about 5.30 this morning. Well, how did he sort it out? Is he an expert on taxes? Chris, Chris Ogden is, is an extremely insightful boxing, uh, who boxed at an amateur level to a high level. What's that got to do with your fucking car breaking down, Stig? Well, he's, he's, all, yeah, he's a bit of a polymath. I mean, he was, his dad was a, his dad had a lorry, a lorry firm, <coughs> and Chris, from, from the age of 10, used to work on lorries, maintaining them with his dad. So he knows a lot about mechanics as well. Right, Stig, we're going off track here. We're talking about fucking diesel, red diesel here. Let's talk about <laughs> boxing. Did you watch the boxing? I saw the Tyson fight, yeah. After Tyson stopped him, did you go, Fury power! Fury power! <laughs> no, I, uh, I, 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 I replied to a few hot ladies and, and uh, <laughs> went back to sleep. <laughs> A few hot ladies. Yeah, no, not really. Are you a bit of a Romeo of, of are you the Romeo of Surrey Stig? Uh well that's the, I don't want to limit probably probably South East England I should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I noticed a few people what's what's that area co co called you I forgot what is it Cobham or something? Oh no, where I live? Yeah. Epsom. Epsom, yeah. yeah. The, the fucking beast of Epsom. <laughs> I'm only pulling your leg, Stig. I mean, you've got about ten birds on go. How do you do it? No, I haven't got ten on the go, mate. I've got, I've got none on the go. I mean, but you just speak to them. You, you, you're just in negotiations, aren't you, really? Yeah, but if you speak to females every time they get in your taxi, Stig, oh, right, you know, in your know. head you're fucking seeing them, aren't you? <laughs> No! You are. I've 
I'd never, ever, ever give um, get, get involved with a woman in a taxi. Was that was that a great journey? Yeah. Did I make Did I make you laugh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think I'm a bit crazy? Yeah. But in a nice way. Yeah. In a lovely way. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely, girls. Well, thank you very much. So you watched Tyson's fight, and what did you think about him coming out in American shorts? Yeah, I think that's very clever marketing. I think that's brilliant. I mean, I think that I think that in his heart of hearts, I think uh, Tyson is a midwest. Midwest gentleman, actually, and uh, I think that's brilliant. I Don't really you think it's an insult not. to people from Great Britain where they were born? <laughs> yeah, but let's be honest, mate. Um, it's not as if this country embraced him once he proved how very talented he is. So it's that's so why he wore the shorts, then, is it to have a slap back at the all the British no. fans? No, I don't think so. I don't what do you think, think then? I think it's just it's just good for marketing in the USA, and uh, I don't think Tyson's the sort of person that wants to slap anyone in the face. Would you get an American boxer coming over to England wearing England shorts? Uh, was his name Lennox Lewis? <laughs> Lennox Lewis was born in West Ham, wasn't he? East London. Yeah, I know. But he, but, 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 he, but he fought for Canada in the Olympics. Yeah, because he went out there with Canadian citizenship as a 12-year-old, didn't he? Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Look, mate, I, I haven't got a problem with it. I think he's clever. And, uh, I, I, I've always said... So it's I done to get money, then, is it, and not fans? Well, with fans comes money, doesn't it, really? Mm. So, simple as that. So, I, I, I mean, I, I'm all for it. I think it's brilliant. I mean, I, I'm not all for it. I'm not all for it. I think he should have gone out there in British shorts. But nobody can take anything away from the performance. He was masterful. No, he only got punched. He only got clipped once, didn't he? But he'll work on that, won't he? I suppose. But he. he yeah. You've got to give him his props, mate. The bloke, he's, I mean, he's just coming on leaps and bounds, mate. It's awesome mm. to see. It really is. You can't, can't, can't criticise what he's doing. What did you think to him, him wearing, uh, sorry, what did you think to him, uh, I forgot what we were going to say now. What did you think to his, his train, he, what did you think to his stop at the stoppage, sorry, what do you think to the stoppage? I thought it might have been a little bit, a bit, little bit early, to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, but he was the bloke was being dominated, and he was being hit a lot. Mm. I mean, I thought it could have been a bit early, but if he hadn't have stopped it then, I mean, they, the round was over. It was just about to end. But uh, it was a bit premature. They might have left it for another round and gone out again, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't going to win, was he? We could see that. He was just going to get peppered and, and pilloried, wasn't he? I think we could see that. But I would say, yeah, maybe a little bit early. <laughs> Do you think? Isn't yeah. Do you think Tom Swartz uh, justifies the WBO number two ranking, or do you think it makes a mockery of the ranking system? I think that the uh, all of the ranking systems are prone to corruption, and <laughs> the only one that isn't is the lineal status. Mm. <laughs> well, f for example, Tom Swartz is WBO number two. Yeah, but. His record on the independence is box rec number 56. Now, David Allen's number 20 on box rec, and he hasn't got a ranking in the top 15 across the board, five governing bodies. So, yeah. well, is anybody well, lobbying you know. for David Allen? No, of course not. I mean, mm. when you've got something like Top Rank and ESPN lobbying for you, that's going to alter things. I mean, it's, people need to understand that's the way boxing is. Um, the, the, the best we have as the truest reflection is the lineal status, and I know that you're well against that, but that's the truth. This lineal thing, it's a load of bollocks, mate. Alright. Now, we, we've gone over this time and time again. I know. So I'll just ask you some simple questions. How many world title fights has Tyson won? Well, in my view, it's two. Right, yeah, but how many in the record books? We're dealing with record books here. Well, I'm not because I don't I don't agree with the judges. Well, listen, mate. We can, <laughs> listen, mate. Well, you'd not agree on boxing, then, would you? How many has he won? One, isn't it? In record you, book. You, you, yeah. Steve, you, can you, you just you, answer you, me the question? Is it one or is it two? Well, we we did we, we have to agree to differ disagree on this, right? Well, listen. How many is it? In, okay, then, Stig, How many how many world title fights has Tyson Fury won in the record books? One. One, right. How many belts at the moment does Tyson Fury hold? Does he hold 
he know the remakes he's built now? Right, right. No, he doesn't know. No, no. He's vacant. Right, no. So he hasn't got a belt, has he? No. Only belt Tyson Fury's got at the moment is a snake belt. Right? That's the only... Or is it a Christian Dior? Whatever he's got, that's the only belt he's got. Now, he's number four on box wreck. Or is he number... No, he's number four on box wreck. Or number three, I forget now. Now, he has not got a belt. And his last title win, his only title win, was four years ago. Now, as far as I'm concerned, he hasn't got a world title fight lined up for this year. So he's going to be going into the, his fifth year without a world title. And without a title win. Now that, for me, to be shouting off at you the best in the world, is not good. But he's a victim of, of circumstances, in my opinion. I don't, think, I don't think he handled winning the belts very good. And I think everybody were quick to put him down because he's a traveller. That's my opinion. Now we know he's a masterful, he's a masterful boxer. And it's looking like they could be trying to promote the Wilder fight now for next year. Yeah. Now, that that will be the back end of his deal with ESPN. Now, yeah. his third fight with Bob Arum will be next spring. I doubt that that would be the Wilder fight, because it's a five-fight deal. So okay. we, I think he'll, I think you could be looking at him next spring, or next August or something, July, August for Wilder. Right. That would be his fourth fight, and the fifth fight, obviously, would be the rematch. Okay. Now that's how I'd look at it, but there's also a part of me that says that I don't think his family want him to fight Wilder. I think if they can, the travellers aren't they? They like a pound note. If they can get money for doing eat something easy, uh, or or get the same similar money for doing something harder, they're going to take the easy one, aren't they? Well, anyone's sensible would. Yeah, it's same with anything. If Tyson can get away with fighting your Tom Swartzes and, you know, your Bryant Jennings and, and guys like that, you know, that level. If you, it always to say they're not going to fight Dave, Dave Allen. If he can get away with fighting people like that, why should Tyson fight Wilder where he can get his brain scrambled? Because everybody Wilder's for is dropped to money. Why should he put himself at risk like like that? That's how I look at it. Because I don't think Wild I don't think Wilder's going to want to fight Tyson over no, twelve right. rounds next time. I think he'll want to jump on Tyson. I don't think he'll want to get knocked about because Tyson really touched him up in them twelve rounds, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's, it's a it's a huge test. You know what I'm saying? It's a massive test. He's the most dangerous heavyweight out there. And I can see what you're saying, but I'm confident that Tyson, in his honest, purest, simplistic self, when he goes to bed at night, is quite happy to fight Deontay ASAP. Because if Deontay can beat him, mm. Tyson's quite happy to walk away. It's not a problem. Mm. It, that's, that's how I see it. But, you know, uh, that's, how I, that's the sort of man I think I'm dealing with with Tyson Fury, and that's why I'm a fan of Tyson. And I would like to say, Russ, that, look, mate, I am not a traveller. I'm not. I am as English, I'm not pissed, I'm not saying that, that makes me great, but I'm as English as they come. My family goes back to the Doomsday Book. Now... How do you know I'm, that? Well, because they looked into it. I mean, my dad and my grandfather were really into it. <laughs> Entomology. All right, <laughs> what it's yeah. Anyway, so... Um, oh, look at the hate I get. So, any of the problems Tyson had. Can I, hang on a second, I'm just touch on something. What do you think when you wake up in the morning on Twitter and people say things like, Stig, pull your tongue out, ty out Tyson's arsehole? Dogs do that, you're not a dog, are you? You know, things like that, or yeah, yeah. Stig's gonna well, fucking think... come in his pants and all this shit. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I, see, see, I. I it's not a Tyson. Concerned. Uh, if, if, as far as I'm concerned, I'm sort of walking in front of Tyson, making it bigger and more exciting. I'm not behind him. That's how I see it. So these people don't understand. I'm positively encouraging Tyson. I do. When I see Tyson do things that I don't appreciate, mm. I tell him. And he knows that. I mean, I know, yeah, of course, I mean, Ben is a remarkable character. He's the youngest person in that entire camp. And he's the person that has to rein in the over-exuberance, and he does do it. 
So, I mean, I don't, I see myself as saying bigger things about Tyson than Tyson himself. So I fail to see how I can be behind him licking his arse. <laughs> and of course, if Tyson does something wrong, I tell him, I tell him in a nice way, I tell him. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not really bothered what these fools think. They are incapable of comprehending how magnificent what's going on is. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, but Stig, we're talking about Tom Swartz, see, it was hardly Larry Holmes, were it? No, it's, that's true, but then, mate, it was a great spectacle, it was a lovely evening. Do you it think that the, watching. yeah, Stig, do you think that the heavyweight division at the moment is at its weakest it's ever been? I mean, we keep hearing Bob Arum, Tyson Fury, Frank Warren say the heavyweight division is booming, but do you think it's, talent-wise, it's the weakest it's ever been? I, I, I think one of the hardest things in life is to live in your moment. And it's always easy to look, look back and think it was better then or somewhere else. Look, as far as I'm concerned, when I look at any other heavyweight in all history, I'm absolutely convinced that Tyson would beat them, Tyson Fury. There wouldn't be Tyson Fury, so you make of that what you will. Mm. I'm certain they wouldn't beat Tyson Fury. I mean, and I do really look at these things because obviously I get all these trolls that make me think about these things, make me look at these things. Do you think he'd have beat Lennox Lewis? Yeah, he would outbox Lennox, yeah. He would outbox Lennox, and of course he's got a better chin than Lennox as well, so he did get clipped, he'd recover. Lennox didn't have a fantastic chin, it was okay, but it wasn't brilliant, was it? So yeah, I think he'd beat Lennox. He's got all the advantages on Lennox. So um, he's not got the, the front foot strength of Lennox, but you can't beat Tyson on the back foot, so Lennox would get beat on the back foot. And of course, Ben, who's remarkably technical, will realise Tyson's front foot failings, and he did some pretty good front foot work last night, didn't he? Let's be fair. I mean, I'm not saying that was a... That was a he did. That's what happened. So, you know, I mean, he hasn't got a bad knockout record at the end of the day, but... Yeah, I think he beat Lennox, yeah. And I've, I've, got, I've got massive respect for Lennox because Lennox stood up to Eddie Hearn with the Anthony Joshua situation and wouldn't be bow, bow beaten by big money, which is what was going on. You know, he made it quite clear that in his view, it was AJ who was ducking both Deontay and Tyson. And I, I'm convinced that was the truth now, mate, when you look at the situation and what's happened since with AJ being beaten by, by um, Andy. Where do you see Tyson going from here, Stig? Just keep on going. I mean, it's, it's it's just daily routine, isn't it, really? Look, Tyson's job isn't to go anywhere. He is there. Tyson arrived in uh, in November of 2015, but he couldn't... He, it's like that song that One Republic sing, hanging on, hanging on a rope, got ten feet off the ground. I hear the words you're saying, but I just can't feel the sound. So Tyson didn't feel like the great, the great talent that he is because he just wasn't feeling it. So he went off the rails and learned to live right, and now he's back, focused on his talent. That's his job. So what Tyson's job is to do, to get up every morning, to, make, to, to focus on staying in great shape, to act with a huge amount of class, Bob Aaron and Frank Warren sort out all the fights, and Tyson just helps people who've suffered like him get better and better, and whilst doing that, he gets richer and richer and richer. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It is that simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and of course he's got, and of course he's got you there, uh, running around shouting Fury Power, Fury yeah, Power. That's the that's the Russell disparaging version of the way I speak. What are you, right? What's happened to right? Just for those listeners that keep sending in emails to me, what has what is the truth, Stig, about Fury Power? What is the is the group dissolved now? Oh, this, I, I, yeah, the, 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 the DM group, uh, I emptied it all out because there's someone in it who, who was, um... Did you have a mole? Face. Did you have a mole in the group? At least one, yeah. So now I'm in another group now that's managed, that's headed by someone else. Headed? Headed? He's one of my... Headed? You're talking like you're fucking Ronnie Cray heading out of fucking the firm. Well, that's exactly Headed. what I am, mate. That's exactly what I am. He's my dear. So, so I don't have the, I don't have the overall uh, um, responsibilities for the group, but these, these people have all got my back. So, and, and uh, 
they are elite. Yeah, none of them, yeah, none of them would dare betray me because they'd look, they'd fall out with all the other members. So they wouldn't do that. So you've got this new little club, and you're yeah, and you and there's no mole in it. Uh, well, not that we think, but I mean there may well be, but I don't think so. No, they wouldn't. Dare, no one in that group would dare do that because. <laughs> um, would there be repercussions, you know, Stig? There wouldn't be repercussions, only emo emotionally, because they'd lose out. They'd lose the friendship of the of the decent members. They the lose the friendship of your little club. Well, the, yeah, the, the, the respect and, and, and honour. Yeah, I mean they would do. Fucking hell, Stig! Honor. We're talking boxing chat here, mate. Yeah, but but, but but Rush, these are exactly the same sort of things that you were saying to me when I wanted you to tell me who told you about that video of me that wasn't actually anything I had said The person who right. sent that video to me, Stig, right, sent it on a fucking a, a Twitter account that were fucking shut down, so I don't know who it were, mate. I don't know, mate. It was sent yeah, on a DM. Be, now, if I... Sure it, this is the trouble, isn't it? I mean, yeah. these these vile people, they really are vile scumbags. And uh, What they do, they infiltrate your little club, and then, yeah. they, then they, they, they take the videotape stuff, or they, they share information out, and that, that's basically it. But, listen, it's part and parcel of social media. I did warn yeah. you about getting friendly with people on social media who you've never met, now and, and uploading secrets to them and that. Now, what you've got, what you do have on social media, you have people who leave comments on YouTube and Twitter, and they're not showing the, them true selves. They're all on aliases and things like that, and acting out the fantasies. So, oh, we are. We just, we're just normal. We're just normal, aren't we? Where, where we, we say we are, aren't we? We front, we go out there and front it out, don't we? <clears throat> We are the we're the best. Right? We're out there, and if anybody has a problem with what I say, they just they can come to our shows and say, "I'm going to pull you, Porky." I didn't like that you said uh, Wilder uh, beat Fury by a round. Now, well, come and see me out, and I'll back it. And we'll go through the scores. Now, technically, when you go through the Fury Wilder scores, it isn't that hard to get one or two rounds wrong. Because uh, a lot of them were pretty easy to score, but there were a couple that were hard to score. If you get them wrong, you get the, you, the all, it affects everything. So I didn't say it were a robbery, but all this screaming that Tyson won hands down by five and six rounds, and all this is utter knackers. Utter knackers. But everybody's entitled to their opinion, the judging that mattered on the night. That, you are. Especially me. Yeah, well, the judges that mattered on the night called it a draw, and we have yeah. to move on. Oh, I have moved on, Russ, but it doesn't, I mean. Yeah, but yeah, some I people mean. aren't. I mean, there's gimps from Gimpville Island who keep leaving comments on me YouTube, and they don't understand that I don't really take them people serious. Yeah. Unless, if them people who leave comments on my YouTube want to be took serious, Send a, a, a DM video on DM. Follow me on Porky Corner, and I'll follow you back. Send me a video and let me see what you look like. Because other than that, I don't take them serious, mate. I just laugh at them. No, you see, there's moving on, and there's just saying what you genuinely believe to be true. For well, instance, I mean, I'm not bothered that Huey didn't be did get the decision against Joseph Parker. I've moved on, so is he. But I'm confident he beat it. Yeah, well, I am, but you we didn't get the decision, you move on. I don't mention the Parker fight. I don't mention Pool F fight. You move on from that, don't you? People say... Yeah, people... Go on. No, you move on emotionally, but you've still got... You, you've got to deal with your emotion, and I have. But you've still got the memory, and you still know what happened, and you're still not going to be told that you're wrong by somebody that hasn't got a clue. Simply yeah. So. Did you watch the Isaac Lowe fight? No, I didn't, mate. I was, I was, I was stuck in, uh, I was in, in the service stations at Cobham, one night, breaking down and crying. <laughs> so, out of the Tyson Fury show, Stig, what uh, other fights did you watch yesterday? Absolutely none. I was broken down, mate. So, basically, Stig, what you're saying then is that you are a casual. A total casual, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I never said. Undeniably, Mr. Casual of Casual Land. <laughs> so, 
Well, what what have you got? Did did you see this? Don't you know about Zelfa Barrett winning or Isaac Lowe? No, I knew I knew Isaac won because I've seen that online. So. Um, what uh, about Josh Warrington? Yeah, no, Josh Warrington won in a close points decision, tough fight apparently. What about Sullivan um, Barrera? No, I don't know about that. No. What about Dorticus? Uh, do you know what though? I tell you what. I, I after you know, I found it refreshing. I mean, you're trying to bully me here, but but Peter Fury he came back from um, his over Christmas break after the uh, Huey fight with Pulev, and he was asked the question by um, Coogan, and he said, "I really don't know. I've just not. I've been ta taking a break from boxing. You tell me. That's what he said. So." I'm in good company, Russ. I focus on what I need to focus on. My only concern, the only reason you know me, is because I could see a massive talent in Tyson Fury being wasted. And all I've ever wanted to do is try and help that talent not be wasted. That's it. And of course, that applies to Huey as well. And to a lesser extent, um, uh, what's his name? Tommy. But not really. I mean, Tommy. Tommy's going to be, do very well because I think that uh, Tyson's just—he can't fail really. All he's got to do is focus, and he's going to win. That's as simple as that. I would have thought. Here he, uh, sorry, to, uh, Tommy. What do you think to the uh, ring, uh, the box wreck, uh, the new box wreck pound for pound rankings? I'm sure they're okay. I, I haven't looked at them, mate. So, um, oh, pound for pound. Uh, well, we're gonna, I mean, who are we going to have at the top? Probably, I would, I would have to say, I've got to put Loma at the top. No, uh, Loma's sixth. No, Loma's fifth. That seems harsh to me. Saul Alvarez, number one. Crawford, two. Yeah. Golovkin, three. Nah, Errol no, Spence, no. four. Lomachenko, yeah. five. Usyk, six. Yeah. Birchelt, seven. Callum Smith, eight. Santa Cruz, nine. <laughs> Callum Smith, come on! <laughs> Manny Pacquiao, 10. I mean, that's ridiculous. Tyson Fury's not in top 10 for box rec, number one, for pound for pound. Yeah, you've got Lomachenko at six, Callum Smith at eight. Come on, who's doing that? That's probably Eddie's, Eddie's, Eddie's man, probably. Oh, come on. So Alvarez, who gets... Decision after decision after decision in his career because he's a he's a cash cow is better than no no I'm sorry mate he's good I accept that I wouldn't say he's better than Crawford as a boxer though Callum I Smith think... just won the Muhammad Ali Trophy for the World Boxing Super Series yeah, so but I mean you know what what, what would you... he's so, he's been very active mate he's really achieved anything he's fantastic. king of his Callum Smith's king of his division 26 and 0 19 so, iced king of his division is number one across the board yeah but have you do you not can you not see how special Loma is I mean it's a shame he's at such a light weight but that bloke is special yeah but what it is right this is the point I'm trying to make is this <coughs> right we have 17 weight divisions, so they have a pound for pound top 17. Yeah. So Callum, and then they'll pick them out in order. Now Callum Smith, he's the king of the super middles, and they rank his division the eighth best. Yeah, That's how it yeah. works, Alvarez. Now, but they've slipped, I've noticed they've slipped Golovkin in at number three in these 17, so they would have had to probably drop one of the lightweights and the flight weight the light and the, and the flyweight guys which they have but uh three four five six seven eight nine ten that was up thirty four but it's seventy yeah so they probably kicked them two guys out and they've probably added Jacobs in and Golovkin in their places but other than that it's pretty much all the way across the board. They've got uh Alexander Gavosdyke as the uh, main guy at light heavyweight, but yeah, he's number two on box rate. Kovalev's number one, but yet he's not ranked in the pound for pound. So the the box wreck, I don't know what to make of it. I'm a big fan of box wreck, but as well, regards I, ranking, I think it's just good for statistics. I think I might I'm have to fucking just ignore their rankings, cost. I don't know. I don't know. It's good to find out what's going on with Box Rec, but as regards ranking people, it's a bit poor in it at the moment. 
if you can't get your head around it, put your head in the sand. That's yeah. what it's like. Yeah. So all, all in all, Stig, you're happy with Tyson Fury's performance then? All right. Yeah, I have come yeah. Great then. Well, peace out then, Stig. It's been nice talking to you. You're oh, always thanks. fun to have on. And uh, keep on trucking. Love you, mate. All right. Bye. All right. All right. That's the Stig.